timing me yet. Okay. This is called The Frog Prince 2, an open letter to the princess. Dearest princess. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dearest princess. First, I would like to apologize for the regrettably public nature of this discourse. I'm afraid that your decision to proceed with this restraining order, as well as the alteration of your cell phone numbers, the closure of your email accounts, the blocking of my access to your precious tweets, the oxymoronic unfriending, and the revocation of my security clearances has left me with no choice but to contact you in this most public manner. It is with a heavy heart, then, that I thank the kind editors of Us Weekly for agreeing to print this letter, especially at a time when so much of our national attention is quite naturally focused on the trials and tribulations of Ms. Lindsay Lohan and Mr. John Gosselin. Unfortunately, public discourse is the only outlet left to me now, the only means by which I can communicate with you, my love, my one time, one and only, the woman who quite literally brought me renewed life and then took it all away. But perhaps you have forgotten, my dear princess, the nature of our relationship. Perhaps our shared history has been melted from your brain by the searing and famous kisses of Mr. John Mayer, who now occupies my space in your bed, and I am loath to say, my place in your heart as well. Princess, let me remind you. Once upon a time, a prince was turned into a frog by an evil witch. The frog prince toiled in the patties of his kingdom, a lowly amphibian, cold-blooded, web-footed, peer of the newt and the toad. He lived as a frog lives, imbibing insects, lolling about quite literally in the muddy bottom of the food chain. And then, miracle upon miracles, he was kissed. Kissed by a beautiful princess whose very touch carried the magical power of transmogrification, metamorphosis. Michael, I want you to note that I use the word transmogrification. Thank you. <laughs> he was reborn, a prince again. But he was a prince in a new kingdom, a new world, for time had not stopped during the prince's amphibious seclusion. Time had rolled on. The witch's curse assured our lowly frog eternal life, for he did not age, even as the land around him changed. As village turned to city and city to suburb, he retreated further into the swamps, sheltered himself under paddies, learned to love the smell of grasshoppers in the morning, the busy churn of the swamp at night. And time marched on until the kiss. You were smitten, perhaps as much I realize now, with the unique power of your kiss as with the results. I was in love. We lounged in the most comfortable deck chairs, swam in water of crystalline chemical blue. We danced to the rhythmic bounce of Beyonce and Jay-Z as we looked into one another's eyes and sang it over and over again. Got me looking so crazy right now. Your touch got me hoping you'll page me right now. Your kiss got me hoping you'll save me right now. Your kiss, indeed. We were the brightest, the most beautiful. I exchanged my puffy shirt for Tommy Hilfiger, and you signed the contract with Versace. Those were the days. Vacation with the Beckhams, the week on Clooney's boat, the house in Ibiza. And now I cannot even think of these places. Like everything else, they are ruined forever by the mere thought of John Mayer in that house, on our bed, doing God knows what. But unfortunately, I do know, dear princess, for I have seen the video. I paid my $39.95 along with every other single desperate man with a credit card and a laptop, and I watched my beautiful princess down in your glorious knees, legs akimbo and double back with a strangely marketable FM crooner. <laughs> Please, before you embarrass yourself further, my princess, do not protest. I've heard your declarations of innocence, seen you on Oprah and watched your father's barristers doing their nightly spin on Fox News and Entertainment Tonight. But you forget, dear princess, you forget that I'm in a unique position to identify that little mole on your Pilates enhanced behind. See that? Intangibles. So despite the national outcry and the lawsuits and the grainy amateur video production values, I know it was you. I knew that you were a modern princess. As a human, I did my homework. I read PerezHilton.com and TMZ. I knew about the Playboy spread. But you told me those days were behind you and I believed it all. 
And now to see you and John goddamn Mayer splay legged on the very comforter we received from none other than Queen Jordan, Queen Noor of Jordan. Do you have any idea the pain you've caused? Did I ask to be kissed? Did I ask any more than Gregor Samsa to be changed into this horrible creature who writes to you now, wretched in my longing, golemized in the national media? Do you know what a joy it is to be a frog, to be concerned only with catching enough insects to get through the day? There is a rhythm, uh, there's a rhythm to swamp life that has gone missing in industrialized society. And we know you with your Twitter and your jet, your hair extensions and implants and Botox are none the better for it. Swamp life is a simple life, predictable, honorable. Of this, the joy of simple pleasures, you would know nothing. Perhaps there is a misconception about the catching of insects, a belief that it is a grinding blue collar job, long hours and no return. Nothing could be further from the truth. As a frog, I was a hunter a true part of my ecosystem. I ate, defecated, swam, and lived as one with my fellow beings. Rather than tread upon the grass or the bog, I lived in it. Was I a target for the turtle and the raccoon? Naturally. But I assure you, dear princess, knowing now what I could never have known then, that I would take my chances with the raccoons and the bats and the fish every time, rather than risk the vultures of Hollywood, London, Paris, or New York. Before your kiss, I knew nothing of credit ratings, car payments, interest rates, mortgages, lawyer fees. Now the Hummer is no longer in my control. My bank accounts have been closed. The Amex card no longer carries its special magic. The iPhone is no more than a stone in my pocket. The men at, my sec at the security gate prevent my access to your very kingdom. Can you imagine what life is like without these things? As a man, it is pure agony. But as a frog, a different story. And so now that you have left me, I in turn am leaving you, your world, all that you have come to represent. I return now to my beloved swamp. What's done is done. I am transformed in body, but not in spirit. I will lay down in the mud with my amphibian brothers and live that simple life again. Goodbye, my princess. Ribbit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Housley. Barrel House. He came in at seven minutes and four seconds, judges. Just to let you know, four seconds over the time limit, that's not so bad. I've seen some ugly shit go down at the literary death match in terms of time limit. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Michael M. Hughes.